marching because Killer Kyle should not be going to this campus. That is white supremacy at its peak and it does not belong at ASU. Kyle Rittenhouse is not just any random killer. He's a white supremacist killer. There's clear evidence that he did defend himself, and the fact that we actually have opposition just proves the fact that they either didn't watch the trial or they just don't love this country. I thought I'd use this video to talk about the Kyle Rittenhouse trial in my own little way. All the facts of the case have already been out for a while now, so purely talking about that seems like a waste. But I think I would feel remiss if I ignored this important teaching moment in how the mainstream media manipulates people. Because a big question people have been asking is, how can so many people believe factually inaccurate information that you can easily verify as false with just a 10 second Google search? How could people say, he crossed state lines with a firearm, when that's completely untrue? Before August 25th of 2020, had that gun ever le left the state of Wisconsin? No. How could people say that Kyle didn't live in Kenosha, when that's not true? On the date that this all happened, you were an Illinois resident? Correct. You had grown up in Illinois? Correct. You had not spent any significant time living here in Wisconsin, correct? No. You'd agree with me that's correct? No, I, I had spent time in my father's house and partially live here also, so no, that's not correct. I mean, have you guys ever heard of a divorce? Kids with divorced parents can live in two places. So how could people trust mainstream media after they have just blatantly lied out in the open for the past two years? Well, I'll tell you how that happens using this very high-profile trial that pretty much everyone is aware of. That way, the next time they try to do this, you won't fall for it, or, more importantly, so when you talk to other people about it, you can show them how this information gets manipulated while using an example that they are aware of. Let's get into it, but first, if you like the content you see on this channel, then consider making a donation. Viewer support helps keep me independent, and it helps fund the channel. Links to my PayPal, Patreon, and Subscribestar pages can all be found in the description. And also, don't forget to support me on Alt-Tech. Links to my Odyssey, Rumble, and Minds pages can all be found in the description as well. Anyway, let's get started. Manipulation happens with articles that have titles like this from NBC News. The title reads, Kyle Rittenhouse was an active shooter, according to Wounded Paramedic. In my personal opinion, if you are trying to mislead people, this is a genius title. The goal of these articles is to get people to believe a lie, while at the same time, the news source is telling the truth. The way you do that is through framing. If you don't know what that term means, basically framing is the way that you present a story. There are many ways to do that. For example, you can frame a story differently by hearing it from different perspectives. The way Kyle Rittenhouse tells the story is going to be different from the way Gage Grosskreutz tells the story. You can also frame a story differently by how you describe the characters involved. That's where the genius of this title lies. But before I talk about that, let me just point out that if you write an article, somewhere around 90 to 95% of the people will only read the title, which means for articles, the title should contain the most important piece of information that you want the audience to know. What does this title say? Kyle Rittenhouse was an active shooter. That's what NBC wants you to think, and that's the purpose of the article. That's why that information is first. But you might say, wait, that's a lie. And you would be right. It is a lie. Kyle Rittenhouse was not an active shooter. According to the FBI, an active shooter is an individual actively engaged in killing or attempting to kill people in a populated area. Kyle didn't do that. If you watch the videos of the event, you can clearly see that he acted in self-defense. NBC can get away with calling Kyle an active shooter, even though it's a lie, because of line two. Kyle Rittenhouse was an active shooter, according to Wounded Paramedic. NBC didn't say it, they are just reporting what Gage Grosskreutz said. But you, as the random viewer, don't know the events and you don't know who Gage Grosskreutz is, so you see the words Wounded Paramedic and think, one, he's a paramedic, so he's there to help people. In a crisis situation, a paramedic is a position of authority, which means that this opinion comes from an expert. Two, you think, well, he's wounded, so he must have been shot by Kyle, and I don't see how he could inaccurately report the event considering that he was actually there and he was the one who got attacked. Here's the kicker. That's not even what Gage said in his testimony. Did there come a time when you were running that you did pull your gun out? Yes. Why? 
in the moment, uh, I, I, I thought that the defendant was an active shooter. Gage said he thought Kyle Rittenhouse was an active shooter, which introduces doubt or that he could have been mistaken. Do you see how that single word changes the interpretation completely? At no point during the testimony does Gage say with certainty that Kyle was an active shooter. In fact, when he's cross-examined, he doesn't describe any indication that Kyle was even a threat. You didn't see him threaten anybody, right? No, I did not. You didn't see him point his gun at anyone? No, I did not. You didn't see him um, raising his voice in an agitated manner or anything like that? No, I did not. So if Gage didn't say that Kyle was an active shooter during the testimony, where did they get this quote from? It took me an unreasonable amount of time to find this, but apparently the quote comes from a Good Morning America interview. What do you want people to know about this case and, and what happened that night that they may not already know or think that they know? I think the most important thing to remember is that Kyle Rittenhouse was an active shooter. He murdered two men and he attempted to murder me. Oh, I see. So Gage will say with certainty that Kyle was an active shooter when he's not under oath and can't be found guilty of perjury. If Kyle sues the media for all the lies they told about him, I hope he sues Gage Grosskreutz and his lawyer as well for defaming him on ABC. Also, I find it interesting that Gage would use the word murder here because the judge told him specifically to not use that word during the trial. There's a time in this video when you appear to hold your hands up. Why did you do that? <laughs> After Anthony Huber was shot um, and the defendant had, after murdering Anthony Huber, uh, the objection is sustained that whether uh, the death of Anthony Huber was caused by murder or not is for you jurors to decide and not for the witness. So uh, uh, I'm going to ask you to strike the comment. Can you see why I say that mainstream news is dishonest? If they were trying to report things honestly, then NBC would have reported what Gage said during the trial, where the burden of proof is much higher than Good Morning America, where Gage can say whatever lie he wants. The fact of the matter is that Gage could not call Kyle an active shooter in the courtroom because there is video evidence that disproves that claim. Because of that, Gage has to introduce doubt into his statements in court or be at risk of going to jail. But NBC doesn't want the quote from the testimony because they are trying to portray Kyle in a way that makes him look like the villain. You can't make Kyle look like a villain with the court testimony, but you can with Gage's statements on Good Morning America. The situation where Gage is not under oath allows NBC to change the language so they can report the facts in a distorted way. That's why the words you use to describe people and events are important. That's framing. If I had changed the title to something more accurate like, Kyle Rittenhouse was an active shooter, according to a guy who chased after him and pointed a gun at him, would that change your perception? Would it change your perception of the story if I told you that the wounded paramedic was in the process of trying to kill Kyle? I think it would. I think that information would change a lot of people's opinions. What if the title indicated that Gage was a former felon? Would that change people's opinions? Unfortunately, that's not what the article says. And for the person scrolling down Facebook, they just see the key words. Kyle Rittenhouse, active shooter, and wounded paramedic. So as your brain files away that headline in your memory, it plays the game of telephone where it may lead you to think that the article said, Kyle Rittenhouse was an active shooter who wounded a paramedic, when indeed, that is not what the article said. This doesn't work on everyone, but when you're talking to hundreds of thousands or millions of people, you're going to catch tons of people with that misinformation who will then repeat it to all their friends who also don't do their own research. Now you believe a lie, while at the same time, the writers did not lie. And it worked. How many people have you seen on the opposing side who repeated the line, Kyle Rittenhouse was an active shooter? That's how this stuff works. Of course, if you actually read the article, it's full of emotional pulls that are irrelevant to the facts of the story to try to put you on the side of Gage Grosskreutz. Then, way down at the bottom, NBC finally mentions that Gage had a gun. That gives them plausible deniability so that people can't say they purposefully left that out, while at the same time, it ensures that most of the people who read the article will miss that crucial piece of information. Last, as if they didn't mislead you enough, they say that Gage said he wasn't threatening Kyle. They can lie about the events by saying what Gage reported. Well, for one, Gage is a complete liar. Here's the evidence. His testimony was that he thought that Kyle was an active shooter, yet he saw Kyle multiple times during the riot while viewing him as not a threat. 
One of those times included Gage having a conversation with Kyle right after the death of Joseph Rosenbaum as Kyle was running to turn himself in. Gage didn't perceive Kyle to be a threat at all here, even though Kyle said he just shot someone. This is the video you recorded, correct? Correct. Hey, what are you doing? You shot somebody? Who shot? This happened shortly before Gage pointed a gun at Kyle. Does this seem like a credible resource for NBC to quote if they are looking to be honest? Not only is it very obvious from the cross-examination that Gage did not believe Kyle to be an active shooter, but what the article did not mention was that Gage has a pending lawsuit for millions of dollars against the city where he would be more likely to win if Kyle was convicted. If that's not a massive conflict of interest, then I don't know what is. This is a notice of claim. Is that right? That is correct. Okay. Filed on your behalf by your lawyer, right? That is correct, yes. Making a notice or telling, among others, the city and county of Kenosha that you would like $10 million. That is correct. So are you aware in this document, you never mentioned that you actually possessed a firearm. You know that? That is correct. You left that part out, right? That is correct. To be fair, uh, this is your testimony today. And how this case turns out has, a, has an impact on your ability to try to collect your $10 million, right? That is correct. So if, he's convic- if Mr. Rittenhouse is convicted, your chance of getting $10 million bucks is better, right? I'm not entirely sure how that plays out. So let's read this again. Grosskreutz had a gun in hand when he approached Rittenhouse, but said he wasn't threatening Rittenhouse when he was shot. Who exactly is reporting this? That is a straight-up lie, and they get away with that lie because they are quoting witness testimony, even though that testimony wasn't true. Speaking of witness testimony, here's what actually happened. Um, Mr. Grosskreutz, I'm going to show you what has been marked as Exhibit 67. Uh, That's a photo of you, yes? Yes. Okay. Um, That's Mr. Rittenhouse? Correct. Okay. Now, you'd agree your firearm is pointed at Mr. Rittenhouse, correct? Yes. Okay. When you were standing three to five feet from him with your arms up in the air, he never fired, right? Correct. It wasn't until you pointed your gun at him, advanced on him, with your gun, now your hands down, pointed at him, that he fired, right? Correct. Jeez. If anyone should be on trial here for murder, it should be the defending lawyer for murdering Gage Grosskreutz during that cross-examination. Gage got destroyed during this part of the hearing. The only moment that was better than Gage going against the defense was this comeback from Kyle. Isn't one of the things people do in these video games try and kill everyone else with your guns? Yeah, in the video game, it's just a video game, it's not real life. They've been saying this for 30 years. I'm still waiting for that scientific evidence that proves that video games lead to violence. But back to Gage Grosskreutz. Everything I've shown you in reference to Gage all happened during the same testimony, so if the person who wrote this article was trying to be honest, they would have reported that Gage pointed the gun at Kyle before Kyle shot him in self-defense. Don't tell me that NBC just missed it. That specific testimony was a massive event that everyone was talking about. But instead... All we get from mainstream media is the half a second where Gage pretended to surrender, to which, by the way, Kyle lowers his firearm and accepts the surrender. After Kyle accepts that surrender, Gage points his Glock at Kyle's head, and then Kyle fires. During Gage's testimony, he says that Kyle, quote, racked the gun. Gage interpreted that as Kyle refusing his surrender, and that's why he pointed his firearm at Kyle. This is a lie. Sorry I can't show you the video while I discuss this, I'm trying not to get my content age-restricted. However, the source material is easy enough to find, so just do a quick search if you'd like to follow along while you're listening. Now, I know a lot of you out there have no idea how rifles work. If you did and watched the riot video, you would think that this statement from Gage is stupid. For one, there is no reason to rack a gun that is already loaded with a bullet in the chamber. I know they do that all the time in movies, but that is not how guns work. The only reason for Kyle to rack his gun here 
is if there's a jam like a stovepipe jam or a double feed. The motions to clear those jams are very obvious, so something like that did not occur. You can actually go frame by frame and see at no point did Kyle ever pull the charging handle to rack the gun. If you don't know what a charging handle is, here's someone pulling the charging handle on a rifle and racking the gun. It's a very obvious movement. Again, I'm not going to show the event because YouTube will throttle the video by age restricting it, but you can easily find it yourself and go frame by frame on YouTube by using these two keys. Now there is a point where a guy walks in front of the camera. I doubt that Kyle could have cleared a jam in the half a second it takes for that guy to get out of the way. Plus, the chances that guy would just so happen to block the camera at the exact moment that would make Gage's testimony true is unlikely. The moral of the story here is that Gage is a liar. During his testimony, he displayed that he was quite knowledgeable about guns, and for a while, he had a valid concealed carry permit. He was looking right at Kyle, so he should have known that Kyle did in fact not pull the charging handle. NBC, using Gage's statements as credible information to get you to believe things that aren't true, is horrendously immoral. Hopefully it's illegal too, so Kyle can sue the shit out of them. Moving on, because this was just one of many manipulative lies that mainstream media told about this completely obvious case of self-defense. Again, from NBC News. Here is one hell of a tagline under the title. It says, The nearly all-white jury deliberated homicide charges against the Illinois teen in the shooting deaths of two men at the 2020 protest in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Tell me, what key words are people going to remember from that tagline? Protest, I can imagine, is one. Again, framing, it was a riot, not a protest. You can easily see that from the video footage. But I'm sure the key word you first noticed is all white. Remember how your brain plays that game of telephone? Well, for many people, they're going to skip past that word nearly because of how memory works, and probably mostly because of confirmation bias. What they will instead read is all white jury. NBC could have said mostly white to avoid the confusion, but they didn't. What do you guys think? Why would NBC want people to think that the jury was all white? Why exactly was race even relevant here? Everyone involved in the case was white anyway. Let's scroll down to the article and see if we can find out. It says, cleared of all five charges, blah blah blah, during protests. Protests, not riots, apparently there were protests. Over the shooting of a black man by a white police officer. Huh. Let's continue. Rittenhouse was charged with reckless homicide in the slaying of Joseph Rosenbaum and the intentional homicide of Anthony Huber. He also faced attempted homicide for severely wounding Gage Grosskreutz. Wait a second. Since we're talking about race here, why don't you have any of their races listed? It seemed relevant to list the majority race of the jury and the race of the officer and the race of Jacob Blake, but the races of the people that Kyle shot in self-defense were not important? That's very strange. Maybe this clears it up. This is an archive from The Independent. The article is titled, Kyle Rittenhouse Cleared of Murder Charges After Shooting Dead Two Black Lives Matter Protesters. Wow, that title is full of inaccurate framing. It gets better in the tagline. The tagline says, Teenager who shot three black men with a rifle found not guilty on all charges. Well, that's a strange mistake to make considering how high profile this case was, especially considering that they made that mistake after the verdict as in after Gage Grosskreutz, a white man, testified. Weird how the media only seems to frame race when it makes it look like white people are unjustly attacking black people. A nearly all-white jury clears a white man of all murder charges. A white cop shoots a black man. Never mind that Jacob Blake was armed with a knife and refused to drop it while he was in the process of stealing a car and kidnapping a child. Don't want to let people know that, right? but it's almost like they wanted people to think that the rioters Kyle shot were black because they know that it will rile up a bunch of BLM supporters to continue the riots and have a season two of what happened in the summer of 2020. You know, when BLM did all those riots that burned down a bunch of black communities? I don't remember seeing CNN report that inconvenient truth or report about how much damage BLM has done to black people, so of course they want more riots, because mainstream media companies are evil. Look at this video from Democracy Now! where they call Anthony Huber a hero and they conveniently leave out Joseph Rosenbaum's criminal history. Joseph Rosenbaum was the first person Rittenhouse shot with his AR-15-style rifle. 
Joseph Rosenbaum was 36 years old. He had been released that same day from a Milwaukee hospital, where he had been treated for a suicide attempt. He was unarmed. 26-year-old Anthony Huber tried to disarm him by hitting him what he, with what he had in his hand, his skateboard. Rittenhouse shot and killed him within seconds. Anthony Huber was absolutely a hero, as we all intend and mean that term. Do any of you watching this watch Democracy Now? Are you happy they are protecting Rosenbaum after what he did to children? I'm not being hyperbolic here when I call these companies evil. They are intentionally reporting false information and leaving out key details to control the narrative. Here's Democracy Now! doing it again with regards to Jacob Blake. In Anthony Huber's case, ultimately starts with the shooting of Jacob Blake, an unarmed black man. He was not unarmed. He had a knife. That was so well known that even the New York Times had to admit that Blake had a weapon. Here's some positive news. Look at the dislikes on this video. People are not stupid. However, these companies aren't just lying to you. They also write articles empowering BLM and Antifa terrorists by showing those people saying, riots are the voices of the unheard, and no justice, no peace. So I am beyond giving the mainstream media the benefit of the doubt and saying it's ignorance or saying they just made a fact-checking mistake. I am beyond giving them the benefit of the doubt when the Washington Post calls a mass murder a tragedy at a parade. No, it wasn't a tragedy. It was a mass murder event. Then they called a black man with a long criminal history who supports BLM an SUV. All while at the same time they made sure to insist that this wasn't a terrorist attack brought on by the media's false reporting of these events and the media's encouragement of violence. Don't believe me? Here's Maxine Waters earlier in the year telling her followers to get more confrontational if they don't get the verdict they want out of the Chauvin trial. We are going to get a verdict that is say guilty, guilty, guilty. And if we don't, we, got, we cannot go away. We've got to get more confrontational. We've got to make sure that they, they know that we mean business. More confrontational than the riots they were already participating in? Look at the definition of the word confrontational. She is literally encouraging terrorism here. They're saying if we don't get the political outcomes we want, we are going to get more aggressive than we already are. How is this the party of peace? Keep in mind that mainstream media for years made sure you knew that the Charlottesville killer was white, and then they tried to make it seem like every white person is a white supremacist, just like the Charlottesville killer, to promote hatred of white people. Don't tell me these news sources are unbiased when this is how they report information. Everyone is biased. The only difference is that mainstream media lies about that, while the independent media is actually honest about their bias. Last, I'm tired of giving mainstream media the benefit of the doubt when I see articles from The Guardian titled like this. Kyle Rittenhouse wasn't convicted because, in America, white reasoning rules. How can they claim to be anti-racist with a title like that? Look at the tagline, when white people find black protesters scary. They're trying to make you think that Kyle shot innocent black protesters instead of a convicted pedo who was white and two convicted felons who were white who all tried to kill him. You can read about their criminal histories in this article here. So stop this crap. Stop all the stupid race baiting. More importantly, I'll say this to you guys, the viewers. Don't let media organizations like CNN, NBC, The Guardian, The Independent, and The Washington Post trick you into having hatred towards someone because of their race. Don't let them trick you to having hatred towards black people, white people, Latino people, Asian people, Indian people, Middle Eastern people, or any other race I didn't mention. It's all just a divide and conquer tactic to make us weak and easy to subjugate. They don't want us getting along because if we aren't busy fighting each other, we will actually have time to realize how evil these companies are. If we united against them, we would be too powerful to stop. So you can give these media corporations a giant middle finger by simply shaking hands and getting along with the people they are telling you to hate. Every time a white person invites a black person to a barbecue or vice versa and they have a good time, it pisses off these corporate and political grifters. I cannot stress this enough. These people do not care about you or your problems. Look at this. So what does he do that night? Oh, let me tell you. All the awful things Joseph Rosenbaum did. He tipped over a porta potty that had no one in it. He swung a chain. He lit a metal garbage dumpster on fire. 
Oh, and there's this empty wooden flatbed trailer that they pulled out in the middle of the road and they tipped it over to stop some bear cats and they lit it on fire. Oh, and he said some bad words. He said the N-word. What? The media is not going to jump on that? The prosecutor just said that a white man saying the N-word a bunch of times is not a problem when he was at an event that was supposed to be about fighting against discrimination of black people. Why aren't the media calling Rosenbaum a white supremacist? Why aren't they calling the prosecutor Thomas Binger a white supremacist for making light of the use of that word? Gee, maybe this is why they wanted you to think that Rosenbaum was black. None of this has to do with helping people or telling people the truth. It's all just a game to them where the answer to every question is always racism. Even against reasonable doubt, NBC says that the horribly racist jury was nearly all white. Did NBC take the time to point out that Wisconsin is 87% white? Just from a probability standpoint, a nearly all-white jury makes sense. Maybe they should blame the prosecutor who thinks the N-word is no big deal for not pushing for a more diverse jury. One last thing. It appears that the Independent wrote a retraction after they got caught in a race-baiting lie to get people to believe that the people Kyle shot in self-defense were black. It says here, a headline written by an editor on the UK homepage, which linked to this article for approximately one hour on November 19th, 2021, inaccurately stated that the men shot by Rittenhouse were black. They were not, and we are happy to set the record straight. Oopsie. No, I'm sorry. I've watched the media lie so many times about this that I don't think it was a mistake. And of course, the correction was printed all the way down at the bottom of the article, where surely no one will see it. Let's be honest here. Sometimes I make mistakes, but when I make corrections on a video, I put them in the most visible place possible, which is a pinned comment. If I really wanted no one to see my corrections, but I wanted to have plausible deniability, then I would just put them at the very bottom of the description of my video, where I know that if a video got 500,000 views, maybe two people would see that retraction versus the tens of thousands who will see it if it's a pinned comment. The retraction on the independent article should be printed right under the headline so people will see it. But that's how the mainstream media manipulates people and spreads misinformation. Moral of the story, don't trust the things you see from mainstream media and don't hate people because of their race. The way this all gets resolved is by all of us coming together and getting along despite the media, the politicians, and the activist groups constantly trying to divide us. If we stand together, we win. But with that said, I think that's enough for this video. So if you liked it, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, comment and share. If you would like to support this channel, then you can do so with PayPal, Patreon, or Subscribestar. You can find all of those links in the description. Last, don't forget to check me out on Rumble, Odyssey, and Minds.com. You can also find those links in the description. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.